Hi, thank you for watching my channel today. My name's Sarah. My channel is Your Tree Shelf, and today I'm filming my most loved books of 2019. I tried to keep it to 10, and it sneaked over. I think it's 12. I haven't actually counted again, but so um, some of them I haven't got with me because they were library books. So I'll I'll talk about those ones at the end. The first one is a classic which I wanted to read because the film is um, now out and it's a book which is a bit controversial in that I haven't finished it yet. I read, um, it's a book which was originally in two parts, or two volumes, and I finished the first volume and then I had to, um, I wanted to read a couple of uh, my Christmas books which I couldn't really um, read after Christmas so I, bro I broke off it the end of the first volume and I'm going to now recommend the second volume but I know it's going to be a favourite of the year and it is Little Women by Louisa May Alcott so I'm sure most people have read this so if they haven't they know what it's about but it's about the March sisters um, Jo, Beth, um, Amy and Meg and um, their relationship with each other and their mother is set in the time of the American Civil War. Their father's away at war and um, they have wealthy neighbours, one of whom is uh, a boy called Laurie who is firm friends with the girls, especially Jo. And this is a lovely book because it's very upbeat, very, um, very kind of sweet and innocent but also there's some really lovely like sort of lessons in this book so there's lessons on gratitude there's lessons on um friendship family on how to manage anger how to manage conflict and um how in a society where wealth and status were often put above um love and friendship and gratitude um how you can overcome that in that in that time and realize that actually it's it's who you're with and your basic needs being met um that matters not um not your status in life so there was just it's really beautiful and I, i'm missing the march girls and i'm looking forward to getting back to the second part and i think when you miss characters that's a sign of a book that's um really good so that is um the first one the second one is one I have got a hard copy of, but I um, I uh, listen to on audio, and that is by a man who is one of my favourite authors, Patrick Gale, and it is a perfectly good man. If I keep looking away, it's because there's a little flat reef right in front of me, and the birds um, keep landing on the reef and um, and eating the seeds of out for them. So if, if I keep looking up, it's because I'm getting distracted by the birds. Uh, so this book follows a man called Barnaby Johnson, who is a local vicar. And he, it, it follows him from when he was a boy through to when he is um, an old man. And it jumps around in time, so it's not linear. And it follows him and his family and some of his parishioners. And um, there's a kind of underlying... Um, <coughs> excuse me. There's, it, it, what happens is it starts with um, a young boy who is about 18 and he commits suicide with um, Barnaby Johnson present uh, by taking a phenobarbital overdose and um, it sort of spreads out with the consequences of that and the fact that he was there and it focuses a lot on his own family as well and I love I love Patrick Gale's writing it's set in Cornwall like most of his books are it talks about faith and religion, um, but it's not in a preachy way at all. It's just about um, how that affects the community and about Barnaby's struggles with his own faith. And it's about like relationships between husband, wife, um, colleagues, um, communities, um, siblings. And it's just like so, so, so good, really. That's all I can say. Like, I really love Patrick Girl's writing style. And um, yeah really recommend the next one is one that i did as a buddy read with joe smith and i think buddy reads kind of have that extra memorability because you discuss them regularly it makes you think about them more and so a book that you may have gone yeah that was that was good it makes you actually think about it more and and reflect on it more and miss the characters so the next one that i've that I've put on this list is another classic and that is um, Sons and Lovers by D.H. Lawrence. This follows um, the story of the moral family 
and um, it's about the, the husband, the wife and the children and ultimately the relationship between um, the mother and one of her sons and Paul and um, it talks of how their relationship affects his other relationships and this kind of constant fear of losing her and her fear of losing him and you see how the relationship develops and why it develops as it as it does and it also sort of messes up um, Paul's ability to form relationships with others and um, so I still got my uh, chapter or my markers of where we were going to discuss in the top but it's it's set in uh, before World War One, and it's it, it's a lot of it's like life in the pits for working class families, and it's very interesting. But also, I re the characters are very well developed, and I just really enjoyed it. And I'm looking forward to reading some more D.H. Lawrence probably next year. Next is an author who was new to me, who I'm definitely going to go on and read her other works, of which I have many. And this is uh, The Night Watch by Sarah Waters. So I did this as a buddy read with um, a few other people. And I really, really loved it. It's it's a book which is unusual because it starts off in um, at the end of the time period it covers. And then each section, there's three sections, and they all work backwards. So um, the, the last section of the book is set in a time period before the beginning of the book if that makes sense so that's quite unusual and it worked really well and it follows four um four different people and their immediate family um during the second world war uh, or just before and after and during the second world war and it's wonderful it's the storytelling is fantastic it's very well written as well as being pacey uh, a page turner there's certain bits in it where i just couldn't stop reading and the bits that aren't pacey cause it's not pacey all the way through but the bits that aren't pacey are um so interesting and um well written that you want to keep reading and i just really really loved it i've i want to watch the television adaptation but i just haven't got around to it yet so that's something i i need to do but i've got several other sarah waters books and i'm super looking forward to reading some more i love this one I have another book which is set in the Second World War, which is non-fiction. This book used to be my granddad's, that's how I came about having it. I never would have probably heard of it otherwise. And this is um, To War with Whitaker, which was a buddy read as well. And um, this is a basically the wartime diaries of Hermione Ranfurly, who's the Countess of Ranfurly. So from um, an upper class uh, background. And it's her husband uh, goes off to war and he is in the middle east and so i'm just trying to come remember what kind of regiment he's in it's a, it's a horse regiment and the families aren't allowed to the wives aren't allowed to go with them whereas they were in other parts in other bits of the army and so hermione is trying to follow him even though she's not allowed to and she's getting very high um positions sort of diplomatic positions although they're not labeled as such because she's a woman so obviously she couldn't do things like that um and so she's in secretarial roles but she's doing a lot of diplomatic work and it's uh, incredible what uh, what a woman she was like um she's, she's died now but um really really um incredible how strong she was and how much adversity she had to cope with and also the kind of different war experiences because I hadn't heard anything about what the war was like in the Middle East, only really what it was like in sort of Germany and Britain um, and maybe America, but not in the Middle East. So that was really interesting. And how there's a lot of lovely nature writing in here as well and how in really difficult times she'll find joy from flowers or animals or something like that. So um, it, was, uh, it wasn't an easy read and it wasn't a quick read, but it was very interesting. And she was such a character and... I admire so much that I wanted to include this in my books of the year. Um, right, next we have another one which I have a hard copy of but I listened to on audio. And that is uh, The Muse by Jessie Burton. So this is the second Jessie Burton I read. I read The Miniaturist a couple of years ago and I love this just as much. So this follows um, two timelines. One set in Spain just before the... Um, Second World War, or it's around the Spanish Civil War. Yeah, in the uh, uh, in the mid nineteen thirties. That's what I thought, and I doubted myself. So, um, so there's one family here in Spain, and the time period is um, sort of an English um, well-to-do family who've gone to Spain, 
and the relationship they they have with a brother and sister who are very sort of poor and and become very involved with their family and the second is a in the 1960s in london with um a lady called odell odell so uh, a, a, a black woman called odell and so it talks about her um, experience in the 1960s in london as a black woman and also her relationships with her employer and a man who she meets who has a painting and the painting is how the two stories from the 1930s Spain and the current um, 1960s section in London are joined together and it's um, a, quite a slow build and um, I, you really get to know the characters and uh, relationships with each other but when it's, it builds up pace towards the end um, lots of people said oh I guess I guess the twist I had suspicions of the twist but I didn't know if I was right and actually I was kind of right not fully right so it, there was still definitely intrigue and um, I really loved the narrator and I love Jessie Burton's work and I'm looking forward to reading her next book that's just come out as well so that was that one and then I have two more in in uh, physical form so the next one is um this one which is an older book from i think it's from that originally from the 1930s it was published um yeah 1937 is when this book was written and this is their eyes were watching god by Nor zora neil hurston um i got this in a charity shop and i wanted to read it immediately because I was really interested this is about a woman called Janie and it's set in America and she has dreams and she wants more than just being a wife and stay-at-home mum to lots of children and living in poverty and she um she this journeys her relationships with different men and her relationships with her community and it focuses solely on um, like black community in the states, and so it's really educational for me as well to sort of understand what life was like at that period of time. And as it it progresses as Janie ages, and it's it's just the writing was so so incredible. Basically, as I think I remember saying at the time, like not a word is wasted in this um, in this book. It's written in dialect and every single word is well placed so the sentences are and they're not overwritten at all they're quite simple but they're so beautiful and the meaning of them is um wonderful and i just love the writing style of this book and um yeah i will remember it with love and then the last one i have in paper form is another non-fiction a spiritual book um which is the untethered soul by michael singer and as you can see, this is all the bits I um, that I put tabs in to, um, to go back to because um, I felt that I would benefit from them again. This is the kind of book that I should read annually because I know that I'll learn a lot from it every time I read it. And it's basically, so if I just read the back, it's probably easier than if I try and explain it to you. So what would it be like to be free from limitations and soar beyond your boundaries? What can you do each day to find this kind of inner peace and freedom? The Untethered Soul offers a simple, profoundly intuitive answer to these questions. Whether this is your first exploration of, the, of inner space or you've devoted your life to the inward journey, this book will transform your relationship with yourself and the world around you. It begins by walking you through your relationship with your thoughts and emotions, helping you uncover the source of, and fluctuations of your inner energy. And then delves into what you can do to free yourself from habitual thoughts, emotions and energy patterns that limit your consciousness. Finally, with perfect clarity, this book opens the door to a life lived in the freedom of your innermost being. So um, if you think this book might be for you, um, if you go to the um, Super Soul Sessions podcast, which is Oprah's podcast, uh, she does an interview with him, which was so good. And that's how I found about, out about him and this book. And as you can see... It was wonderful and um, even just kind of when I was picking up these bits again, just, um, yeah, sorry, I'm just like reading the bits already. If I just flip to any of these, they're so beautiful and um, so lovely and yeah, I need to read this again, pronto. <laughs> right, so that's all the ones I have hard copies of. I just have a couple of other ones that I wanted to mention, which were library books. Um, 
So uh, the first one is one that I've mentioned about 500 times on this channel. It's just Big Bones by Laura Dockrill. Um, this is a YA book about a girl called Bluebell and her, this is her food diary and it's written in chapters with her, which have feed as the titles but it tells her life story as a teenage girl who's overweight and through food and it talks about body confidence and Bluebell is a beautiful, happy, um, wonderful soul and um, she brings joy wherever she goes and I loved her, I loved reading about her and I loved reading about the feed as well because it made me like, oh, I love, I love cooking, I love feed. And so the descriptions were awesome as well. Um, the next one is Mariana by Susanna Kearsley, which I've also mentioned lots of times. This is a historical romance book and it's set in two time periods, one in the present day and one in the time of the plague. And um, so the character, the modern present day character, she um goes to a house which she starts having these funny experiences in where she's transported back to her a previous life that she had as a girl called mariana in the time of the plague and the um i don't want to say too much but the experiences that she has in the past keep come weaving into her present day life and it's just so good it's so beautiful and the love in it is so wonderful and the writing is brilliant and the past doesn't change the future so she's going back to what's already happened she's not changing what already happened and um yeah it's just so wonderful and i loved it so much and i really want to read more by susanna kearsley and then i've got two more one is another book that I've already mentioned about another 500 times and that's Waterfalls of Stars by Roseanne Alexander. That is another, um, it's a memoir so another non-fiction and it's about um, Roseanne and her husband who become the wardens on the island of Skoma which is an uninhabited island to the west of Wales and uh, it's about their daily experiences with nature and how to manage when you're on your own and you live in a place where it's very remote and isolated and um, they have to make all their own food, they have to do all their duties for being a nature warden, the descriptions of the landscape and the wildlife are phenomenal and um, it's about how they, how do they, you know, go, want, how do they reintegrate into normal society when they've been on their own for so long beautiful it's wonderful it's it's um a book that i will always remember and um had a profound ex um had a profound um impact on me and then the last one on my list is wilding by isabella tree this is a, another non-fiction book and it's about um isabella tree and her husband have um an estate called nep castle and they used to farm it and the farming was no longer becoming um, profitable and they were getting increasingly into debt. So they decided to stop farming the land and with the help of different grants and things, which were very hard won, um, they decided to rewild all of their land and introduce different uh, animals back like longhorn cattle and wild boar and um, deer and basically just let nature take its course. And... Um, it was incredible and one of the, the sort of take home message I took from this book was how perfect nature is, how she will think that they they have to try so hard not to interfere when they see these kind of um, thistles, for instance, like uh, completely taking over a certain bit of landscape and then they'll have um, a, a huge population of butterflies will just come and strip it all back and then it's gone and they have um it's just talking about so much about the balance of nature and how if we let other animals use the ground as it was intended to be used it solves a lot of the problems like if we let beavers are um can we let beavers back into the um land and if we let them build their dams it reduces the flooding and if we let the cattle um roam on certain places it aerates the soil and if we stop intensively farming the soil, we get more nutrition, we get more species. Uh, there's all these, um, you know, it, it prevents um, 
the canopies of trees are taking over too much and not letting enough light in and there's all these lessons that we've would have had a long time ago and then you know built into us and that we've just lost over time due to our greed and our over intensively farming of animals and of land and um it was it was just really a profound book um how on how perfect the world is and how we are so good at messing it up and if we actually just stopped interfering how it would come back and yeah you can probably tell how much I loved it and the lessons in it and I think the work that they've done is is wonderful and I hope that more people will listen to them <clears throat> so that was my fix of the year for 2019 I don't know how many it was in the end as I said but let me know if you've had any of them or if you'd like to read any of them now that you heard me talk about them and I'd really love to know what your fix of the year were so either tell me in the comments or leave a link to your video if you've done a video about your fix of the year <clears throat> because um it's really nice to like look back over the year and when I look back I mean I loved those books I had some that I was like yeah they were okay um, I don't think I had a phenomenal reading year, but I think that I had a good reading year. And um, I'd be really interested to know how your reading years were too. So um, yeah, leave some comments for me below letting me know. And um, Happy New Year. Thank you so much for your support um, watching my channel over this year. It means so much to me and I've made so many lovely friends. And um, yeah, have, a, have an amazing 2020. Bye.